Welcome everybody to this next presentation. It will be uh, regarding card draw by Christian. And uh, my name is Finn and I'll be, be your organizer. Hello everybody. Um, as we can see, my name is Christian Schmiel. I'm working from Germany as product manager, technical graphics at Corel. And I'd like to welcome you to this presentation. Today we are talking about uh, visual technical communication, the CorelDRAW technical suite, and we'll have a look at some scenarios. And uh, let's see how we get started. Okay, so um, what is today's session about? So uh, visual communication, why? Um, this is something we have to talk about. And um, there's a centric pr process where all data comes together. We will have a, a, a quick look on that as well and a small introduction into the CorelDRAW technical suite, what it is and what it consists of. And then we have a demo part after this theory and uh, about creating technical illustrations. Um, this is a centric approach with leveraging CAD data, engineering data, and generate technical illustrations and visual information from that and uh, possibilities we have in that process and uh, the refinement of the imported data. So um, why do we need visual communication? Um, it's it's very obvious, but uh, there are very uh, specific reasons to to go for a picture or a graphic instead of text. So um, if you're just uh, confronted with overwhelming text, then uh, it can be very boring. And um, yeah, if it's important information and and warnings and stuff. Um, yeah, your concentration might suffer under that. So it's always good to directly point on something. And what also is very interesting is uh, you can show the situation instead of explaining it and uh, the user gets it right away. Uh, you can show the contents of the product, what, what's in the back that you uh, purchased, so you can be sure that everything is contained. You can reduce pages of your documentation uh, by um, replacing text with graphics. And there are other, other very serious things like uh, warnings where that everybody understands every, everywhere on the world, language independent warnings and uh, specs and standards such as S1000D in the aerospace and defense sector where uh, even the, um, the, the graphics itself and how you create them and how they look and feel are standardized and that's a very important process. And sometimes it's just better to have a picture like an arrow where you can just uh, uh, show where stuff goes in and out. And um, there's a nice thing I always have in mind is uh, how to do up a tie as text. That's very, very comprehensive text. And so if you have a picture, how to do that, that's much easier. And um, yeah, when you remember you are somewhere in a, uh, in a spare parts shop or somewhere, then they can show you exploded views and you can say, okay, I want to have this part and these bolts and uh, this glue and whatever. And you don't have necessarily to explain the items. Uh, you don't, you are not even show, uh, sure if you, if these are the right ones or not. And the last but not least is, um, clicking on uh, pictures in the internet is way more easier uh, for ordering spare parts or get more information on that instead of reading through endless text. Okay, so that's the, the, the most important things. So let's go back a little bit in history. Um, in previous times, the creation of technical illustrations was a job for subject matter experts, mainly coming from the UK. And uh, these, uh, these processes definitely faded away. But what we see with this information as well are styles from previous times that are still in use and have a lot with the recognition of the correct information. One of the usual techniques is the use of thick and thin lines as we see here. Such 
techniques do not fulfill the purpose to make an illustration just fancy and cool. Um, furthermore, they help to make the object more realistic and give a robust support to digest the information in an easier way. Um, these techniques have the purpose to expose the technical information in the best and quickest understandable way to the target audience. And we still remember that we are talking about submitting distinct information and not just showing a picture. And uh, that's the main purpose. So we are visualizing information, which is uh, um, maybe something like a warning or a specific situation to, to, to avoid accidents or stuff. So it's, it's serious information and, and not just a nice picture. If we have a look at a company having a tech, tech pubs department, we see a rich amount of various tasks and that they um, that are connected with the creation of information. The technical writers can leverage several sources of information and bring this all together for the best quality results with the lowest efforts. That's a very important point. Um, on, on top, we see the indeed most um, effective way to obtain images using existing engineering data. And in this case, the technical writer can take the 3D data and arrange it as it fits best for the information transport to the user. Uh, this is a huge time saver and also ideal for beginners. And uh, um, But there are also other errors which are mainly disregarded when it comes to technical illustration and exploded views and all this stuff. And uh, this is worth having a look. So. Um, also, with photos of situ uh, situations um, uh, or other parts, there are a lot of files which can be used directly with some final touch-up. Removing backgrounds, shadows, and adjusting contrasts may be enough to use a photo right away, so you need a solution that can handle that as well. Also, technical information must not always be an exploded view or two boats with an arrow. Um, there are marketing brochures for sales support or advertisements of the products. Um, uh, yeah, another, a lot of other stuff. When the information is at hand, even barcodes can be lasered to labels, decades can be plotted or dust covers can be embroidered. This can all, done, all be done with the information that surrounds the, the tech pubs department. And um, there's also one error um, uh, that is very often not considered to be technical communication, and this is the documentation of software and the operation instructions for displays which make heavy use of screenshots. This information is uh, vital for machine operators and in situations where uh, minutes count. To fix issues with a machine, a picture is the fastest way to get to the point, actually. Um, and last but not least, the communication around uh, gathering all information and approval processes before the end of uh, before the end user documentation is ready. So all these information sources are the era where visual technical communication lives, actually. Um, Okay, let's go to the next slide. Um, here's some information uh, and some basics about the Corel solution for these topics and where all this stuff to, comes together. The technical suite is a solution for these types of uh, technical communication and consists of a CorelDRAW graphic suite that we see here. These are the modules of it and uh, which are extended by the Corel Designer and XVL Studio. And that's actually the whole thing that we see here is the, um, the, the technical suite. So with naming it technical communication, we summarize sub errors such as classic technical illustration, for example, the well-known exploded views, technical drawings with their hatchings and dimensions, and all other more technical information representations, for example, also from architecture and stuff. 
So as, as a special feature with Technical Suite, we are not limited to classic technical line art illustrations, but uh, we also create high quality technical marketing materials. Um, if we come back to the TechPubs uh, schematic that we have here, then we can see in a further slide where all this uh, all these modules of the technical suite are uh, are sitting so on top of this we have the uh, engineering data uh, processing that is done by XVL studio this is transported into corel designer where everything comes together and then we have the different surrounding uh, applications here like corel draw when it goes more to marketing stuff uh, you can administrate your fonts with Font Manager and do your screen captures and stuff and work on your bitmaps with uh, Photo Paint. All this is contained in this, let's call this a workbench solution for all the information processing that you, uh, that is necessary to create visual communication. So we actually have three errors where we are processing information and data. This is importing data all kinds of data then we all put this together here in this what i call the the hub of the whole thing corel designer where it all comes together and of course then we can export this to um to different formats and different systems and so on so let's after all this theory let's uh jump into a uh, demo part um just some corrections in here okay so I'm switching back to working file by the way that was the presentation mode of uh, of Corel designer so uh, that's very helpful when you have information and you want to present it then you don't have to change the software you just go to the presentation mode and that's it so uh, let's get started with some scenarios there are tons of scenarios but uh, let's talk about a, a three-page artificial document where we think we want to have maybe a cover page and a little spare parts page and maybe some, some information about warnings and situations. And this all shall be engineering data centric and that we see how we are handing over the information and where we add information. There's one very specific point. Um, if you are using CAD systems, then you can extract a lot of information, but technical illustration and visual communication needs more beyond that. So you have to add more, uh, more little details, more information and stuff. So actually engineering data is always the start for more to step into technical communication. So um, if we start with the, um, so first of all, what we see here is Corel Designer, where we can do all these drawings and things. It's uh, it's just a drawing um, program in apostrophes, but there's more, and we will see later on how we are working on the data. And as promised, we're starting with XVS Studio, which is part of the suite, and where we import CAD data. So I didn't prepare uh, something which is already pre-imported. So let's go to the uh, import process. The important thing is here, what we see is there's a lot, uh, there are a lot file formats that can be imported natively. So we have uh, Katia, Inventor, uh, SolidWorks, Solid Edge and stuff, and we can access this stuff directly and uh, do not have to use intermediate file formats like uh, STEP or IGES to, to get to the information. So we have a SolidWorks file, native SolidWorks file in here that we want to open right now. That would take some seconds and it's an assembly that we open and um, this processes some seconds and then the um, the technical writer can use this information right away it's important that the writer or the illustrator can do this by himself 
without distracting engineers to say, okay, can you turn it like this and this and then extract this for me or export this for me and, and do this and that. And um, it's it's very important to have the separation that the users don't distract themselves, uh, uh, each other. So after the data is read in, we see the 3D model. Um, and of, on one side, we have the assembly tree with all the parts. And on the other side, we have the model and we can click either on the uh, parts in the model, then they are highlighted here or vice versa and uh, click where we want. Okay. If we now want to start processing this data, then uh, I see that my data is upside down. So I can just click on the top level here and move this around. It's very easy. And I give this a 180 degrees and execute this and that's it. So now it's the, the way around. And we want to have the inside part here. So if I click on the tire, then I see that there's a sub assembly and I just switch the sub assembly off and I want to have the guts of my of my assembly here. So we're working with this bunch of parts. And that's the first thing we do. That's the, the easiest thing. Um, once we arrange the uh, stuff as we wanted to have it, um, then we can just switch some more things off here. Just make them invisible and hide them. Okay. And we want this in designer. So then we have a button here that we can send it over. There's a page that I have set up on the A4 format. And we can zoom this in a little bit here. Okay. And there are some details and we can have a look. And there's also these thick and thin line settings with uh, uh, which is set on 06 and 025, uh, which gives more visual impression to get the information quicker. Uh, that's the first step, what we do now. Just some settings here. I'm checking if everything is set up as I like it. And then we just click send and then this information is sent over to designer where we can start working on that. It takes some seconds and uh, while we're waiting, you see that it's processing in the background and then you get the derived picture. What we see before I click OK here, what we see is that the situation that I sent over is captured in the so-called snapshot here. And the more I send over, the more snapshots I get. And I can collect all these snapshots of the different situations of my manual in the same file and go back to each of them any time later. So here's the easiest low hanging fruit. And there is my uh, illustration uh, that I moved over. And we see that's uh, uh, very professional, high level quality with thick and thin lines and everything. And this is actually as we want to see it in our manuals. Um, when taking over information from CAT systems, then in a lot of cases, some information is missing or we want to change something. And this is where the specific functionality of Corel Designer comes into play. Designer has the special thing that we can, as I shown earlier, we can draw all these uh, little elements like rectangles and, and circuits and stuff. But one of the specifics of designer is that we can work in the perspective as well. So we move the cat model over in isometric and we can switch designer to isometric as well. So to do that, I show you this little cube here. This cube actually represents the orientation of this model that we have imported. And when, when we switch on a grid, then we can see how this changes. So, okay. This is the flat grid where I can draw the rectangle. And if I switch now to different views, then you see that the same rectangle gets perspective. 
and so in that case by clicking on these planes we can we can easily draw a box or whatever and uh, change the diameters and, and, and whatever okay so what we see here is I'm switching off the grid again so then it's much more clearer what we can see here is uh, one very famous thing is that the the threads are missing so that's uh, sometimes the threads in in cat models are just a piece of information and no physical geometry and so this is where we can do a correction in in designer without touching the 3d model for this i'm switching to a thread tool that works like that and i can just move over here to draw over the bolt and just drag it in there and switch off the borderline and then i can still change the look and feel of the thread that it's easily recognizable to be a thread and not nothing else we can move it here with the arrow keys on the keyboard like we want we can even copy it over to the other bolts as we like it and do all, all our small corrections here um, as we want and it's easy to know that it's very quick to to change these things since we don't want to play around too much on these uh, on these cat models and we just want to get the information here okay so we can change the uh, let's see okay here we go there's still one missing but you see how this works so that's this is fixed uh now imagine you want to add some details to that some final touch up for for these orientations or stuff then we can work on this model right away maybe we want to place some some logo in here or whatever or there we want to just point out that there's a little drill hole or what so then we click on the top of this uh, cube and then we can start working here like adding an a, a borehole and we can switch this to thick and thin lines and we can even move a copy of this let's say one millimeter to in the y-axis one copy and here we go so this is not 3d and we are working in parallel perspective and this is where you can fix everything in in your um in your file add things and whatever so whatever you want to do uh, is can you do with designer on the end there's one thing uh, as i said this is the 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 cube is the representation of the orientation here so for this situation it's very good i was placing a uh, um, a bookmark for this so what we see now is um if we want to work on this incline here then my ellipse doesn't really fit so i have to orient this uh, cube on this incline so that's a, that's a very nice detail to show uh, just to highlight this i'm putting in a smart fill so we want to work on that plane here and it's absolutely easy to to grab the orientation of that there's a tool where we just draw a line and then tell designer what the orientation is and then you see that the cube switches around and here we can set a new projection bookmark like uh, caliper one for example and place it here and the nice thing afterwards is if i want to go back working here then i just click on this little cube here then i can uh, go on with working and if i want to go back to that incline here then i can just click on that bookmark and uh, the orientation switches to the next one okay so in that case we're drawing the bow hole here changing 
thick and thin lines, which are automatically implemented. And we do the same here in the y-axis in this orientation. And just a second, cut the superfluous stuff away. So, and in that way, we can easily work on our uh, illustrations that we uh, imported from the engineering data. Um, okay, so much for that. Here we can switch off the bookmarks that we don't see them. And uh, that's it for now. Okay, so if we go to the next page, uh, we will come back to that later here. But if we go to the next page, we also use the, the CAT data. So we're switching back to the situation that we have here. And now we want to create a little exploded view. For that, I'm just clicking on the bolts, let's say here, okay. And I want to have this half of the caliper as well. And we're doing a move again, and we're moving out this part. Then we move this a little bit back, and this is actually the, the process what you are doing as a visualization professional. You're arranging everything uh, and uh, as you like it. You can make uh, things invisible that you don't need, like these bolts and, and, and other stuff. And you arrange everything. And then we're sending over uh, the next portion of information. Just let me see if everything is switched in the correct way. Switching back to plain view. Okay. And now we are moving that over. We've seen that before, but now we're at some more detail. So uh, we want to highlight the caliper on top. Go into the details. Uh, just a second. There's too much scaling. Okay. Okay, good. So, so. We want to highlight some details with some color, and here we can uh, add more information. When you are having CAD data and you want to, let's say, highlight something and fill it with color and stuff, then it's sometimes very tedious and time consuming to, to draw an outline and fill this with color. And so with XVL Studio, you can set this as an option that you get the uh, outlines with the conversion right away and you're saving that time on top. So we will see that now. Uh, we're saying we want outlines and we want them for selected parts. We want them for this part, this part, this part, and this part. And we want color for these four as well. Okay. And now just checking if everything is set correctly. Okay. And then we send this over again. And this is, later on we will see that this is a good example where technical illustrate, illustration solutions are different from plain CAT conversions. So um, some calculating in the background again. And then we start working on designer on the distinct information that we want to submit to the, to the viewer of the document. Okay, so we put the thing in here and now we have access to the different outlines. For this, I'm switching to the objects tree. And here we see that we have access to all the individual elements. And uh, here we have the placed file. And for that, we may want to change the color to highlight the stuff. We have direct access since it's, it's vectors and we can uh, touch uh, every single element. So we do the highlight where we want to say, okay, uh, look, dear uh, customer, these are the things you purchased and this is the stuff that you already have or the, which is in a different package. And if we want to make this a little bit more clear, then we can either 
figure out where our parts are here or we can drill inside the elements and uh, select them with the cursor. Once we have them selected, we can change the, the color, maybe the line arts to gray, that this is more, uh, that the information is clearer. And this is what I meant earlier. You're just playing with the, uh, with the reception of information and not just showing a picture. Once you are done, you can uh, export this later on for your publishing systems uh, and things and um, derive all the information. Okay, so um, let's switch to the next scenario where we say, okay, now we have something, okay, we have something which is maybe more technical information, then we have something which is more uh, yeah, visual information with, with color and stuff. And now we could think about adding a cover picture, which is a little bit fancy, uh, technical fancy marketing material. And uh, this is also something where we can start um, in the CAD environment and just uh, take a different uh, approach. So we are now still in this uh, snapshot that we just created. And here's the example. If I double click on the initial snapshot, then I'm in the view again where um, where the stuff is, is not exploded and we can create a new version of this and then we will later on have a new uh, snapshot. So um, we want to have this in, let's say in a color blue and then we switch this to blue and go to the colors and take this sky blue. Okay. Good. So then we want to add maybe some transparency. It shall be a little bit catchy on the uh, on the cover page. So um, we want these two parts shall be clearer as the other stuff. And uh, we select those and we reverse the selection. And then we said apply a transparency to all the other parts. Now we can see all the inner things and, and, and all the details. We say, okay, that's how we want it. And uh, we move this over now to, to designer again. Um, okay. Same process, but different settings. Want it in that way and go to the details again. And here we don't want outlines but we want to export the images which look a little bit like a rendering and then we have set up everything and then we send this over again and that's the nice thing you arrange everything in your 3d world and add little details and attributes like color and you you cut stuff away or delete things and then you have all the flavors of visual communication and and expressions and you can uh play and work with the data as you like and uh it's not that you get something and you have to make the most out of it it's uh, active playing with that. Okay, good. So now we place this in here. So this is actually a very different display as we have here, but it's still the same data. And then we can add some, let's say, to give this a little bit more context here, um, give this a, a, a background with some grid in there like that just that you see what is possible with, with designer later on and what you can add on top. So let's take a grid here, which is too fine. We turn this 90 degrees, set this to 300%. Okay, and then we can take our model here and move this on top. And maybe we give this rectangle, this this web in the back, just a little flavor here, 
and then you have your cover page where you can display everything. Maybe you can go back and give this a little bit more uh, dramatic drama. So you add a black background and all these things. So that's actually the marketing like stuff that you can add. And um, maybe we remove the transparency again. And in that way, you get the cover page for your, let's say, dry information. Okay, so now we have the, from the same data in, uh, yeah, let's say 20 minutes, we created very different, uh, very different uh, pictures and images. And uh, let's see where we go next. This is all information that you can print, send around, make PDFs or uh, put them in the web. And uh, so let's stay with the web and uh, we say, okay, we want to have this information on our website. We're a small vendor of uh, these brake systems and we want to have a high quality services page where customers can help themselves. And we want to do this with pictures and that they can see where the information is. So what we actually need is part information and maybe a little table under it. So for that purpose, we introduce the sources docker that has access to such information. In this case, this is an Excel spreadsheet. And we just take this and can link it into the illustration as it is. And now we have the information for some parts of this assembly on top here. Um, now, later on, we want to add callouts and say, okay, maybe uh, this item 13 is the outer caliper and stuff. And um, let's say, and um, right now we say, okay, there's uh, some different information in there. We want to change that. So you still have the ability to open this file and to change the information in there, do your corrections, save it, close it, update it, and then you will see that the information changes in your illustration as well, and you don't have to re-import or retype your information and things. You could even take this part here from a different file and place it as well, then you have a, a, a file where everything is placed in and when you change the source, you can update it in here as well. Okay, so let's stay with the caliper and add a callout here. There's a callout tool in Designer where we can add the callouts and say, okay, we want this part here. We see this, that this is, this 0, 0, 0, 0, 0013 and then we can then we have the connection between the the table row and this information here if we want to put this in the internet now we can say okay we export this to svg I'm overwriting this file in here and we export it to that format. So that's the first step to publish the stuff. We see that now here in, uh, in the internet, uh, so everything is recognizable, that looks nice and fancy, and uh, we have the number 13 in here and the 13 in there. The customer can see, okay, that's the part that I need and that's the ordering number and things, but uh, let's go one step further. So I'm switching that back again. What we can do now is that we can connect this call out with this information in here. To do so, we are working with object data. 
And while I'm talking about object data, you have seen that I was reading this information and then I retyped it in here. That's actually subject for misspelling and errors, uh, errors and stuff. So let's delete that callout for now. And we are creating a new one, but with a different option. The CAT system, the, the CAT model that we converted here actually has this information already attached. Let's go back to the XVL Studio. When we have a look, let's say, okay, we're going back to that initial thing here. And when I make a double click on that caliper, then we can have a look into the attached information. And here actually we see that there are different entries and just different criteria and there's also this part number so the information was here and it's still there when we converted the the model over to designer then this information was preserved and when we now switch to the object data option of the callout tool and we point to that element and drag the callout out, then you see that this information is still attached to the parts and I can select the information that I want to display, select it, deselect all other information, click apply, and then this auto, uh, this information is automatically attached to, to the callout. And so um, it's, it's much safer to do it that way. Otherwise, I may be, uh, I'm, I'm having misspelled stuff. I'm, I'm missing a, a zero in there or type of 14 instead of 13. And so that's a very safe uh, way to get the information into your illustrations. Coming back to the point that we want to connect this stuff now. So we're having here, some very nice functionality now with the with the current version of the designer there's an interactive id so i changed that to be 13 as well must not be but uh, can take actually any active id and i want to have a mouse over fill uh, with a specific color um, let's take a color code of red I'm copying that to the clipboard, and that's actually all I need to know as an identifier for that callout. You will now see why I'm doing that. Even if this table is linked in, I can select the individual cells and access them, and I'm doing the same here as well. I'm adding the 13 and the color code for fill. can also add transparency and, and all other things. And that's all what I do for now. And I re-export this to SVG again, overwriting the file, using object data, and that's it. And then I'm switching back to my browser and I'm doing a refresh and now, you can see when I hover over the um, callout, then the table row is highlighted and vice versa. And so it's actually adding two pieces of information and on the export side, designer automat automatically detects uh, this couple and uh, it, it connects them with uh, code in SVG and you can take this from your illustration or print it and uh, whatever, but you can also put it in the internet and um, go from there and make this interactive. And that's a very easy approach instead of just fumbling around in the code and adding everything yourself. So in that way, it's just a few mouse clicks and you have added your uh, information. Um, there's other stuff as well. Um, let's say we want to add some logo or things, then you can import your logos. That's no big deal. But what you also can do is that you I have to move this away here. Okay. Um, you can just 
project this in isometric and put this in there. Do a little bit scaling and you see it's all in perspective, in parallel perspective. And then that's very easy deal as well. And that's, that's the message that uh, the work beyond importing CAD data or just grabbing CAD data and displaying is there, there's a lot of stuff to do and that needs to be done very quick and without uh, bending over backwards uh, since time is money and uh, you don't want to play on your illustrations, you want to have your results and, and get things done. So coming back to the slides, just let me switch off the dockers here. There we see that we have a, a huge load of uh, files, file formats that we can import and export, which is also vital to, uh, to the information consuming process. And we have all the uh, abilities to, um, to import uh, different native CAT uh, file uh, formats and, and intermediate formats like STEP and IGES and DXF and whatever. So that actually brings me already to the end of uh, my presentation. I hope there was some interesting stuff uh, for you in there. If you have questions, um, contact AlphaSoft or me directly. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you will find a way. And um, yeah, we're open for question and answers now. Thank you, Christian. That was a very nice presentation. Thanks. Um, yeah, we, we do actually have a couple of questions here for you. Yeah. Uh, that was sent in during your presentation. Uh, and people can still write in questions in the in the questions panel if they want to. Uh, so first question here is, um, what is the difference between Carl Draw Graphic Suite and Carl Draw Technical Suite? Um, actually, the um, the Graphic Suite is a subset of the Technical Suite, and the the main difference is that what we can see here is that we have the XVL Studio that can handle 3D data and import it, and we have on top we have the Corel Designer which is very similar to Corel Draw, but has all the abilities to work in parallel perspective, has additional dimensioning enhancements and stuff, and goes more, uh, goes beyond creating graphics and more in the technical direction. So that's the, uh, the actual uh, difference. The difference is exactly here. Okay, yeah, good. So uh, next question, it's, um... Uh, what does a Carl Draw subscription include? Um, Product-wise, actually everything. <laughs> Sorry if I <laughs> misunderstood the question, but uh, yeah, no, I'm I'm not entirely sure, but uh, but yeah, that that's a quick answer. May, yeah, maybe uh, you can purchase and subscribe, and uh, it's both the same content. But uh, it's uh, it's different methods to to pay. Okay, so yeah, you have perpetual licenses as well. Yeah. Uh, exactly. Okay. Yeah. So people can can choose. Uh, next one here. Um, I don't have an internet. Um, if I don't have an internet connection available at all times, how do I use um, product features and can I access online content? Uh, yeah, there's a way. We have a so-called uh, deployment guide. That's a document des that describes how to install the software in sensitive environments, especially in aerospace and defense. Uh, it is not allowed to have software that uh, that connects to the outside. So um, having the uh, the right uh, licenses you are able to create distribution packages that you can distrib uh, distribute internally and uh, install completely offline. Okay, great, yeah, good. So uh, I think that was it for the questions for now. 
like I said, if you have any additional questions for any of the products, but uh, specifically for Coral this time, uh, send them to info at alphasoft.com. And with that, Christian, uh, thank you very much for a nice presentation. You're welcome. Thanks.